we heading to, John? What? No. Oh. What'd you say? Where are we heading to? Oh. Um, we are headed to uh, PRP Seats to, uh, I think they're in Temecula, California. Um, it's about an hour from where we are. We're headed there to pick up the window net, should be done now, and to get some straps, um, some limit straps. And uh, then we have to come back to Riverside to CBM Motorsports, um, drop that stuff off. Well, really, first we're going to grab the air filters as well. Um, and I think there's also some other stuff we got to pick up, like fluids. Right now, the guys are back at uh, CBM. They're starting to put the rest of those hoses on. They're putting the harness on. Um, ECM, all that good stuff is going to get connected. And uh, it's really just kind of putting the car back together today. We should have it back together today. Um, we'll take it straight back to the lake bed. Uh, the weather sucks there right now. It's raining and it's going to get real muddy like it was whenever we first got there. Um, but we'll have to just deal with it and uh, get the car unloaded. Uh, most likely we'll put it, we'll have Josh, what, uh, we'll have them put the car back on the dyno first and run it hard again, make sure there's no issues with anything. Uh, not really concerned with the actual motor, but just making sure everything went back together right. There's no uh, leaks or, um, you know, anything wrong. And then, uh, might even be able to, if it's not raining, uh, get the car out and run it a little bit and do some pre-running. So it's going to be a long day. I don't think we're going to quite get to pre-running. Might just call it a day early tonight and then uh, wake up tomorrow, which will be today's Friday. Yeah, today's Friday, so wake up tomorrow early on Saturday and try to get some uh, rocks run. Um, I think there's a race tomorrow already, so I think the rock trails will probably be open, but not the uh, go fast stuff. That's about it. really hold it down or maybe three and the one farthest forward popped off and it just started gushing to Such a bummer. Yeah. Is the car getting done today though? Yeah, they're all there now. I'm gonna run this over to them and then there's a few other things we gotta pick up. I need Where to grab some. Where are getting you done at? Um, at CBM. So it's our guys that are really doing it but they're letting us use their shop and all that. What is it? What kind of car? It's a it's a single seat uh, Jimmy's IFS like Dragon. Oh, okay. Yeah, kind of like Lauren Healy's original car but this is like the new version of it. Cool. Yeah. It's a fast car, but they don't like fire. <laughs> I don't think anything likes fire. So, you got kind of walked around the, the showroom, and then it's kind of our retail showroom. Yeah, this is awesome. And then, we've got sales and, and marketing. It's all in the front here. These guys are all right, so let me go see if she's available, okay? Yeah, you guys always answer your phone really well, now I see why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we try to. Here. We, we try to, you know, I mean, instill in our customer service guys to answer within the first couple of rings because yeah. we know it's important, right? So we yeah. want to do that for the customer. It's very rare in the off-road industry, like the parts <laughs> industry, to answer the phone. There's some, so, of my, some of my people that I deal with, they don't ever answer their phone. I get a call like three days later. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's not good. We, we, try to, we try to take care of everyone. Everybody so, knows who I'm talking about, too. <laughs> <laughs> so this is kind of our digitizing and, and padded area. So... Before we make a key or yeah. making new custom stuff, uh, we'll do hand cut patterns on cardboard or whatever, and then we'll come over to the table, it'll be digitized, and then it goes into the computer to uh, This Eli, he's our, he's our main dude. Uh -huh. Cutting stuff out there, so. That kind of starts the process, it gets digitized, brought into the program. We're the magic guy. We're the magic guy. So we've got three uh, Eastman uh, CNC cutting machines. So those are just banging out patterns all day long. And so kind of what our process is, is as an order comes through, it gets uploaded. What that program will do too is it'll nest the material based on um, 
the best yield. So, once the parts get cut, they go into each individual bin and they're based on color when they get released. Um, which makes it real easy to see it through the plant, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Everything has a form that, that follows it through, that's got all the colors, where the embroidery is, what positions they are, and it's kind of getting QC as a good job of process. So, this is our CNC embroidery machine, so doing all the custom embroidery. So, we not only do our logo, we do custom logo too. Oh, yeah, y'all. So, I used to have a race team called Coyote Off-Road Racing. Okay. And y'all made my piece in there and put my logo on the back. Yeah. Awesome. So right now we've just been busy like everyone else. So we're running, we're running two shifts in um, in our cutting department. We're also running two full shifts in our sewing department and two full shifts in our mounting and assembly department. Wow. It's just it's been crazy. Non stop. I think everyone involved in anything outdoors is just sales have been through the roof. It's hard to keep up. Yeah. We got a lot of backlog right now, but we're doing what we can to try to try to get that knocked down. So so is on break right now, but yeah. So once it goes to cutting, they're going to the sewing department. And again, they're, they're, they're just going up looking off of uh, first in, first out. And we try to have the same sewer do both seats or an entire car. Because yeah. there'll be little oh, yeah. you know, changes. They're all handmade, so yeah. that way there's some consistency. That makes sense. So our inner liner department, they're making the, the actual suspension part of the seat for our suspension seats. Um, again, all handmade. Um, they get sewn here, it goes through the grommet machine. And we can, we can come back after this and do like a whole bunch of like real footage of stuff, right? Yeah, sure. Like kind of get stuff for, because yeah. when we're talking, you don't really want, they don't want to see us walk around the whole place, they want yeah. to see stuff. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So this is our, our lacing department, so basically these guys are taking the inner liners and they're lacing them on the fronts. Okay. And that's what gives the, the seat the suspension. Cool. Once it uh, goes through the lacing process, then it'll go to foaming, so they'll actually start putting the foam on it. We'll also have a barcode label that follows the you know, product all the way through so we can track it as it goes along the way. Um, these guys are actually doing the mounting process, so once it gets foamed, we'll cue it depending on you know which mounter is going to do it, um, and then they'll actually do the mounting and put the, put the covers on it. Covers are mounted. So we'll get in the staging area, and then this is QC and uh, cleaning. So we'll go through and I'll clean the seat, um, check the bomb against it, make sure everything's right, the colors are right, um, logos are right, um, and then let the box it up, and it goes out the door. What's cool about PRP seats, because I've had them quite a few times in my cars and, and Jeeps and stuff, is that. You can get like any color in any section of the seat. Literally like yeah. everything is custom. The yeah. website, and for me what's cool about it is the website actually lets you select it. So you don't have to call somebody and say, give me, you know, black three or green, you know, neon or whatever. You select it, you get like a, uh, like an image that shows exactly what it's gonna look like so that you may thought in your head, okay, this is gonna look great, but then afterwards you can say, okay, actually that looks horrible. Let me start all over, let me change it around. <laughs> So uh, yeah, that's probably the best part about PRP seats is that their website is obviously refined to where you can have a seat ordered and custom built without ever even talking to about anybody really. So. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's pretty awesome product yeah. and it's, it's a great website. It's yeah. really easy to find. And it's funny you mentioned you know, any color, any any seat, any, yeah. any option because we've had we've had seats come through that are just crazy crazy colors. Yeah. Like what happened here? We had one that we thought was a mistake. Somebody messed up. Yeah. And we, we called the customer. Like, are you sure you want it? She's like, yeah, yeah. I just I just gave it to I gave the website to my kids and just let them build oh, something. Oh gosh, that's so crazy. So they got to build their own seats, but they were pretty hideous. But the kids loved them. So. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> this is our fast turn area. So. This is where the harnesses are going out to meet up with the, with the, with the seats and our, uh, we'll marry up the, the mounts and anything else we sell. Um, tunnel pads, uh, limit straps, that sort of thing. Yeah, right. I, need to, I need to get some limit straps. Yeah. So we, we make those here. We, we have two different brands, an import brand and a brand we make here. So.
where the steering wheel is made. All just inventory. Uh, steering wheel is being imported. Okay. We don't make the steering wheel. Um, speed strap is also a brand of ours. That's in the first name. Yes, I got speed strap. Yep. What's up, Gary? What's up, mate? I even have y'all's uh, bins on my race car currently, the little bags, you know? Oh, yeah. So, like, right there on the side of my, uh, like, my quick reach stuff, like, yep. if I need something, that's one of those triangle PRP bags. Yep. And in the very back, I actually have my fluids in your bags. Nice. So, like, brake fluid, steering fluid, the smaller container stuff. Because yeah. if it spills, it doesn't go to run and catch fire. Yeah. I don't want fire anymore. <laughs> and, uh... Uh, it basically will spill in the bag and stay in the bag. Yeah. So yeah, Ca hammers in 2018, we actually did have some oil explode in that bag, and oh, it all shoot. stayed in there. Just wow. it sucked to open it, but <laughs> we still have it now. We washed it, and it's still useful. Yeah. We we still have a ton of bags. Yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> so speed strap is all manufactured here. Uh, we'll we'll load, we'll load the machine up with webbing, and it'll just automatically cut. And then these guys. They're all pretty much built by hand. Yeah. But it's it's hard to find something still made here. Yeah. You know, that's good quality. Um, we make our speed straps here too, or our limit straps here too. Gotcha. Yeah, have good limit straps. They're on my car now. My car is uh, under strap. So <laughs> is the it? Is like, hey, before we talk to you, you need to get some more limit straps. Really <laughs> under strap. In the front, it has like an 800 lower spring and a 500 upper. Oh shit! It only has one little strap on it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, product development. Francisco is a lead product designer, um, so he's making patterns by hand, testing new stuff, trying to fine tune. Uh, he'll also do you know the high end stuff too if we've got a, a one off customer one. Gotcha. Uh, it'll all go through him. Yeah, I mean. We've got over a hundred different frames and styles, and so these guys are, and you can customize them any way you want, you know, taller, wider. So um, these guys will take the, the raw parts and just build the frame based on, on orders. Um, that is, you know, one of the great parts is we can, you can customize however you want. You so know, do y'all actually dudes, bend the, Yeah, mines are always yep. wider and taller. So uh, do y'all actually bend the metal here and everything? Yeah, so we've got oh, this, yeah, this big heating bender from 1978. Yeah. That's some real, you know, Detroit steel right there. Yeah. It's funny because this machine went down for a little bit and one of the technicians that came out was an older guy and he had worked as an engineer on this project and he was super stoked because this is number one and he had worked on number two and number three. Wow. <laughs> but wow. this thing's just seems great, it's bulletproof. So. so how long have y'all been here in this facility? Uh, in here, we've been here two years. And where were y'all at prior? We were in a mix of other buildings just over in, here in okay. Temecula, but it was uh, three different buildings. Yes. The, uh, and uh, how long have y'all been in business for? Since 1997. 1997. Yeah. So my first Jeep was a, uh, my first off-road vehicle was a 99 TJ, and I had PRP seats back in 99. <laughs> I sure did. That's awesome. Yep. I've always jobbed you. I've probably had... Man, I probably had at least 10 vehicles, not counting race vehicles, uh, with PRP seats in them. I've always used them in everything. Anything that was a Jeep. I've owned like probably about eight Jeeps and I've had them in everything I want. Yeah, they're, they're the best, right? Yep. And they're the most comfortable well, for the sure. first mod you gotta do. Yep, <laughs> right, we rip those seats off at our gym. We have five different rolling stations. Um, you can see kind of the jigs that they'll use for the different, the different seats. Um, these are need to be modified, but basically that's the rock. Right, it's here locally, so it's going to not come right back. They have powder coating, it's like a whole other business. Powder coating, yeah, yeah is, is a whole, whole other deal. Yeah, we're pretty stoked with this because we got stolen in one roof, we got the steering yeah. here. Yeah, it's awesome. Quality control, this is how you have to do it. Exactly. Yeah, it's really nice. 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 Yeah, it's really nice.
Ja, vi er bare. Got him, huh? I guess these are made for like uh, like commercial equipment, like uh, caterpillars that are out in like dusty, dirty conditions or something like that. He was like the guy in there said, "I never sold one." Before. Well, as long as they work, right? Yeah. The other ones weren't even that bad. They just got they just got like a little bit of char is the only way to explain it like it never caught on fire doesn't look like but it kind of got roasted from the bottom so decided to actually maybe from the top i don't even know but I just ended up getting some and then i got two extra spares just in case we need them also okay so now we gotta go get burned them up so what is that being cranked uh, the dry sump pulley. Dry sump pulley, which basically, on a normal engine, there's a oil fill, which you can pour the oil in and just fill the engine up with oil, whatever specs it is. On a dry sump, there is no fill because it's all a closed system. So to get oil to pre, what is it called? Pre, pre oil. Uh, yeah, to basically pre oil the, the whole system because you can't start it with no oil in it. Um, eventually, I mean, it would get oil in it, but you can cause damage if you have none at all to start. So we have to manually crank the oil pulley to manually spurt oil into the engine. I hope I said that right. Yeah. Sounded right. Pretty much. I mean, that's exactly how it works. But. It'll be a long day down there, huh? <laughs> So after you crank this thing and put in the oil, what happens afterwards? Well, that's, that means the oil system's primed, so it will be safe to start the engine. Okay. So, But we do need to get some coolant in it before we do that. We will be able to start it and then check the transmission level. Showing 15 pounds on the... Oil pressure. Dennis had to add the motor. Bleeding down now. 13. Yeah. Maybe we should move on to the next step and we can always come back to it. Mikhail, power? Uh, no, power's still on. You can kill it if you want. Unless you need it. I don't. Crank. Take that off for right now. Crank pulley goes there. This goes there. Let me win. Okay. Put it on. Yep. Alright. Over here is good. Looks like you line on the crank. Okay. That should be it. And what size is that? 15 Because he needs to know that because he has to change the belt. He needs to know he's got a wrench or something to do that. What's next? Well, we're doing our final on the lines. He's going through checking what I already checked, putting marks on it, and showing that we did check them. The oil's up, pressure's up. Did the two back here on the radiator? Uh, I did not. Okay. The, uh, we're waiting on water now, so we put the radiator in. We got fuel pressure, everything's no leaks so far, and then we're going to crank it. Crank her up. Make some noise. <laughs> About time, too. <laughs> Oh, this line, oh, that line right there, yeah. Right. So is that not going to have any... So that's probably not going to be usable then. Why? Because I think this system is fully sealed. I don't know, how the fuck does that work? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Well, the, the outlet up there which is sealed away from... The good thing is they're going to be there. 
Oh. Safe careful be there. They'll so be there. Make so life I'll have to get them to help us. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how that line will work. Okay, all training lines are tight. Ooh. And I did the I did the radiator line to the. Need to check that one. Yeah, buddy. Um, rag. Throw me a rag. Right there. Right there. He's got one right there. That's one? Yeah, that'll work. Sorry. It's okay. Try to wipe some of this residual oil off. Not really when it comes to it. I'm not looking at, hey, that thing's leaking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Bring it in. Bring it in. Any help with the drinks? Any help with the drinks? Any two trips? I do this one. <laughs> you're, you're already marked it. It's X, don't it? No. I'm going to X that one because it's a pain to get to. And you already did that one. All right. So you guys got to... Something in here got cut, right? The boot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know. I really don't know what's wrong with it. Just know there's a crease there. But you're kind of expecting for the worst, but preparing for the best, I assume, right? Well, the boot's got to be changed no matter what, mother. Which is the worst. <laughs> trying to. I really like the mount. Yeah. Right there. Hey Neil, what are you up to? Pulling the uh, brake caliber off. I gotta get this hub and stuff off. I gotta get this axle shaft out and get that boot changed out. It ripped up. And what are the concerns with that boot? Well, if we lose all the grease, it's gonna shatter the or the, the uh, balls will come out of it. So this is gonna self destruct. When it self-destructs, bad things happen. <laughs> Without grease. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's the head of the bolt. One right there too. No, is that cut right there? No. So I don't even see the cut on the other one. I didn't either. Let me see. There's a lot of grease sticking out where those humps are. I don't see one that has a hole though. That's what was trying that's what I was trying to figure out when it first happened. I got so the the, the ones I have now that we're gonna put on. Yeah, there it is, right there. Is it on the nut? Right on the boat. Nut. Okay. So we're gonna have to swap them. We're gonna have to definitely swap both sides. Swap both sides? Well yeah, if it's doing it on one side, it's gonna do it on the other side. We got a hand. Yep. Oop, excuse me. Which one was that one on? Nylock. Bob. So once we get these out, we pull them, we'll check to see if the insides have to be done because technically they don't see the uh, angles at the, the outside do. So they are probably going to be okay, but the other side will definitely have to be done on the outside. Triple check and triple check. I have all that new hardware too. I mean, this is new hardware. Woohoo! So what's the update, Doug? Uh, we're waiting on coolant to get back and we're going to run it. So, pretty Start quick. Up. Start it up, make sure nothing leaks. And then we go from there, start uh, tying up all these loose wires, hoses, things like that, and then get back out to the lake bed. <laughs> No, but I mean, the oil pressure was working, so, and all we did was plug the other. Oh, yeah, the whole freaking thing moves. 
Yeah. So. Terrible mount. We need to figure out something how to fix that. All right. And watch this trick. The ground bolt was that? It's not a ground bolt. It's a power bolt. Loose. Far was that? You built the car. No, I didn't. You finished the car. You're the last one to touch that bolt. Yeah, hey, you, you figured that because you put the wires on. After the CVs, what happens after that? Do what? Well, after the CVs, what, what goes on after that? So the issue with the CV is that um, there was no issue with the actual CV. There was a the CV boot is uh, if you look at that one, see how these little studs right here are kind of pressing. You can see there's actually yeah, a, a stud yeah. behind there, the nut that that holds this uh, outer step shaft on. That's the inner step shaft on. Yeah. They look like horns, right? Pretty much kind of. Like well, what's happening is on the on this side because they steer at uh, I believe 40 degrees. Um, they're they're wearing that spot right there. So there was a little bit of leakage on it that we noticed after we went running it the first time, and out of abundance of caution, we want to just replace them with some different. We got some uh, some different CV boots and they are much wider. They're basically built a little bit different and it's gonna make it to where um, there'll be more room for those. Got this it. part of the boot will not touch this part of the boot, which will press it. It's basically pressing it against that little stud, which is causing it to crack Got and it. leak. So this is something that we would have done anyway, regardless of what happened to the car, once we saw that leaking. In fact, after the fire, um, <laughs> after the fire, if yeah. you remember, they were all looking at the fire damage, yeah. and somebody mentioned that boot, and I was like, worried about that, then I fired. Yeah. That's a pain in the <laughs> <ass>. so. <laughs> Should have gone to McFaddendales. I'll go to McFaddendales in the morning. I'm scratching your name off, putting my name on this car. I'm taking over. I'm driving it. It's all me now. You've done way more work in this car than I have. I feel like I have. Oh, I know you feel that way, that's for sure. <laughs> I know that, trust me. <laughs> These two days have been <laughs> hell on you, buddy, I know. <laughs> sucks. Um, this is the 13th hour now of the day. I'm not frustrated. I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm cold. I feel like I'm blind. It's so dark in here. So how's your uh, how's your first experience working on an Ultra Four car? <laughs> I get some good <laughs> you now. Honestly? Yeah. How do you really feel about it? <clears throat> Tell them how you really feel. I feel the urge to defecate. I need uh, to regurgitate. No. Is there a 916 socket laying over there by your feet? By John's massive hoof, there's one. Yeah. It's been fine. <laughs> yeah, that's in yeah. <laughs> well, now, a question for you, John. Is it worth it? I'm fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Stephanie has a shirt that says that. Um, <laughs> things are fine. John I'm fine. Everything's fine. Everything's <laughs> fine. Yeah. Do what? So, is it worth it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm one of those guys that, I don't know. You just can't get frustrated. I was always taught that don't let stuff, this is what I teach my kids, talk to my wife about it, everything. Don't let things get to you you can't control. So, we had a fire, it sucks, but we couldn't control it. It was something that just, you know, happened. And so, yep. if you want to race, you're going to do and if you're the kind of guy that can't deal you should not be racing That's right. because it's gonna happen oh, I did that just for oh. it's gonna happen every single time you race it's all, yeah. um, very few people are gonna have a perfect race every single time so you just can't get frustrated one step uh -huh. at a time this top one don't feel good oh, I mean the car caught on fire these guys like put everything back together strip it all apart put it all back together and we noticed the CVs leaking. This was something that we would have had to fix anyway. So I just looked at it like these are two, two steps that we have to do. Even after doing all that, we still did something on here that's gonna make us race longer on race day. We could have left it. It was just a small little hole that a little bit of grease was coming out of. 
Actually, uh, quite a bit of grease was coming out yeah. of it. But it was a little bitty hole. I mean, you can you had to go looking for it to find it. And uh, you know, you got to get it done. So now it's uh, day three now of uh, repairs. So where uh, I think it is. Where are we at now? What's remaining? What do we have left? Uh, putting, I took this TV apart and now I just got to uh, change out this boot, put it back together and put it back in the car and then zip tie some stuff up and all that. If you look, Josh is over there doing his little final spot. And uh, no. that's pretty much it. Put it back together, get it on the trailer, get it back. And then we'll, when we get it back, we'll pull all the panels off. We'll go through every nut and bolt again. <clears throat> Safecraft has uh, delivered a fire suppression system to replace the one that uh, went off. We'll install that and then we'll get some pre-running and get back to racing. Just to stick in it to hold it, and they should be over there. Yeah. Even if even if it did turn off, it ain't gonna be defrosted or anything. Not with nobody opening. No. Back it up. I want to sweep. Well, I was going to move so we can sweep. We'll move it. And I'll continue to sweep. <laughs> oh, with no pad in the ground, it's super low. <laughs> So first start up, huh? Well, we're just gonna move it out real quick. Easiest job you've had all day. Oh, it's okay now. 
on the next route, maybe you better your way. This is the fitting that came off here, right? It does not want to go on. Oh. Oh. Fucking step stool. Are you go get one? Where's my fucking step stool? I go get it. No. I'm just talking I'm talking out loud, the one. Uh, Where's my step stool? Oh, not that. Mine, yeah. Yeah, I know some of your top. The good, the more gooder one. I like how the professional race car guys always have their truck come with everything. Right up there. Right up here. Yeah, crank her up. See what we're at, pressure wise. Burn my wiener off. 46 is what it was showing. It was like 60 seconds. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, 66. Yeah. Yep, good. Let's see what it...